Hello everyone, we've got a SanDisk SSD that's connected by USB-C and it's not detecting. This one's a little 500 gig. Let me show you how to open them. To get a little flat tool, you can just get inside the corners and pop the top open. Inside is just a M2 SSD with a little USB-C adapter. You can separate them. You've got to be careful though, there's a bit of double-sided tape and it's pretty firm. So even though this is removable, it's still not detecting in a PC with an M2 slot. If you have a look on the back, it doesn't contain any electronics. So let's have a look under microscope. So the first thing we'll take a look at is the main controller chip. I'll shine some light on it so we can see the markings. And there we go. So we've got the SanDisk 2082-100-23A1. And the challenge with this controller is that it's proprietary, there's nothing published on it, and it encrypts the user's data. So we can't do a chip off recovery for this. On the side here, we've got the power management chip, the PMIC, and that's a pretty common one for Western Digital, little one here. You'll also notice that there is no DRAM or cache chip because this is a cheap SSD. Usually they delete them, uh, for, the for the sake of uh, performance, they can bring the cost down. And then right at the bottom, we do have the little NAND chip, and I'll shine light on it as well. SanDisk 60523, 512 gigabytes. So, uh, it's not detecting. We can do some basic checks. There's not a lot of electronics on this, but let's investigate the power management chip. So I'm going to get the voltage that this USB adapter uses and I actually have to connect it to the a USB port on the computer so that the this enables the power. If I don't, then it's not going to enable the power for this SSD. So I'll just pick a common ground. Down here looks okay to me. Um, if you have a look up here, you'll see the 5 volts that comes in via uh, USB. And if we go up to these pins up here, these three on the outside, that'll be our power pin. And that's our 3.3 volts. So this one gives it 3.3 volts. We'll match that. Okay, I've just got this connected to my lab power supply, and I've got the 3.3 volts. I'll turn that on, and the first thing I notice on the lab power supply is there's no current going into this. Um, so I might just see if I can probe to get any measurements, but it, generally speaking, that's an open circuit. And is it an open circuit because there's something wrong, or is it because there's some kind of enabling that's meant to occur with the PCI channels? So, um, let's just check here. We've definitely got our 3.3 going. There's a little LED glowing, but, I'm just not seeing any activity around this power management chip. And the fact that it's open, what's on this side? It's this little diet. Okay, there's 3.3 volts there. So I know that our voltage is coming in. I can't probe that. It's connected. We'll just touch all these caps. Now this little... Um, power management chip it might be m unique for Western Digital who owns SanDisk I think um, I, I had a bit of a dig online to see if there's a data sheet when you can't see a data sheet it's probably not a standard off-the-shelf item so the standard ones are good because you can find little data sheets gives you all the pinouts and modes what's meant to be happening so what's that doing there? Nothing. Interesting. Um, so it makes it a bit hard. I'll just check there's no shorts to ground. I don't think there is, but I should just double check. I should have done it before I set it up. So I'll just grab one point common ground and I'll just check these capacitors. Ground side. Ground. Uh, 
Okay, so one side's ground here, but the other side's also ground. So is that one? These two... Okay, that looks like a ground plane. Hmm. No one there. Okay. Now that one's on ground too. Be nice to have a working one to compare it with. Okay, now they're all shorter to ground. That's confusing. So unless I didn't probe it correctly, but I think maybe I've charged up a capacitor just doing this test, which has dropped the resistance on the short to ground. But if I wait a bit, that short on these ones will go away. Okay, I don't know why these ones are. I'll have to see if I can have a look at the footprint. Can we zoom in? So I'm just getting in a bit closer, trying to see what the footprint is of these capacitors. Give them a bit of a clean. There's a bit of gunk in there. No. So it looks like, let's get that back in there. Let's just check this again. See how we go. So what's ground? I think this top side's ground. No, what well, is at the bottom? One side's ground. Okay. any ground on that side. I'm just kind of probing. Is this working? Oh, my setup's not working, that's why. It's my multimeter that's playing up. I'm trying to do continuity mode here. That's better. Don't know what happened there. I don't think I've ever seen my multimeter do that before. Okay, so that must be the power side if this is working. So this must be the ground side. No, yeah. Okay, so there's ground there. Okay, good. So we know that these these pins here. Yeah. Okay, that's your ground. In here is ground. That side's ground. It's hard to see the footprint. Okay, literally everything around here is on ground. Everything's on ground now. Okay, everything's on ground. Something is not right. So I don't think this one's a problem. It's okay. It's not shorter to ground. 
That must be the main voltage in. This little diode says N2 upside down. There's a lot of um, underfill in this chip as well, which is going to make my life a little bit harder. I'm going to scrape that off. It's kind of weird that they've only underfilled this chip here and then this side. But I need to scratch it off so I can probe the electronics. This here looks like it's a little MOSFET. Must be 4 pin, 6 pin MOSFET. So I've just got this scalpel in and I'll scratch it back a bit. It does seem like something suspiciously is up in this area. The fact that there's open circuit on the bench power supply when I feed power in, but there's a short circuit around this power management chip. It's a little bit weird, so maybe something's fused off. I wonder if it's got some kind of protection mode. Interesting. So the a bit hard to get into this back side of this diode here. So we've got non voltage. I'll have to check the anode cathode of that. So let's turn the power back on. We've got 3.3 .3 volts going in, but we've got an open circuit. It doesn't draw any current. Now, we know we've got 3.3 .3 on this side. Does it feed into this side? No, it does not. Okay, so I'm not getting... I'm not sure if I'm getting a good probe there on the back of that. I think I am, yeah. Oh, it looks like I am. So we're not getting it there. I'll just check around here. Okay, so we've got 3.3 .3 there. Three point three here. Jeez, it's hard to get. Okay, this is not a good probe. A bit small to get in here. And a bit awkward with the camera set up. Let's have a look here. Right. Let's try it without it. We'll use the fat fingers probe. Okay. Okay, let's use this fat finger. I'll get in here. So we've got 3.2 there. Not on the other side of the capacitor. That's kind of good. Nothing on the little one there. Well, let's just probe around the rest of them again. I would expect to see voltage coming out on the other side of these capacitors somewhere. Okay, there. 3.3 .3 there. So maybe this little AF switch here, mosfet looking thing, maybe it's not switching things on, but we still got this short circuit which I think is a short circuit up here. Hmm. What I'm going to do is check the voltages down at this 
NAND chip, and I'm assuming that these two capacitors are our feed-in voltages. So one should power the chip, and one will power the input-output functions of the chip. But let's have a look. I'll need the multimeter on for that. So I'm assuming it's 3.3 volts. Okay, we've got nothing there. Nothing there. I'll just check my voltages are working again. Um, back up here. All right, 3.3. So nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Nothing there. Now. I kind of expected that because if there's no no um, current flowing, why would it send any current down to the chip? But something is going on up here. I just excavated this little trace wire going up behind this diode a bit better to have a look. So it looks like that's possibly a feed line or what is that goes to the ground no okay so if you look at the diode the the arrow is pointing in the direction right so you got the anode on this side and the line here and the same line on this little white wire here is the cathode let's just clean that out And I just want to see what that does. Is that ground? Yeah, that's ground. Okay. Oh, yeah, that's on ground too, is it? Okay. I might take this out of circuit again just to double check that. I don't want to get any weird readings from this setup. So uh, let's get my negative. I'm just going to connect that to this screw pin here. Uh. Okay. Let's see what this does at the back here. Okay, that's ground. There's no ground there. So we've got voltage here. So... Ground. We've got 3.3 volts on that side, 3.3 volts on this side. That must feed into this little MOSFET here. It says AF. And that must switch on this. Yeah, we got shorts to ground. Shorted, short, shorted, shorted, shorted to ground. Okay. How are we going to figure out what it is? Something must be switching this off though, because it's gone open circuit on the main power. So the main power comes in underneath, comes up here somewhere, possibly this side or under here, feeds this. This is all short of the ground, so this isn't actually activating anything. Hmm. I just went through my parts to see if I had another one of these. It would be nice, but Here's something, another SanDisk. This is from 2017, this one, and it's got a very similar power management chip. In fact, the 9040VM339, and this one is 9040VM330. Okay, very similar appearance. You can see it's got four dabs of underfill, where this one's got underfill all around it. The reason why they put the underfill on the power management chip is because of that continuous um, uh, heating and cooling cycles to give it that mechanical stability. It's just going to be annoying for me to try to remove it. I might get my hands on one. So yeah, this one's a 2023 by the way, so it doesn't look like SanDisk has changed much. 
I'm going to put a little bit of heat into this underfill and see if it's easy to chip away at. So I've just got it on a nice and cozy 200 degrees Celsius. So I've been putting a little bit of heat in this and this underfill is pretty difficult. So it's more than likely going to damage this chip if I try to remove it. What I might do is get myself another one of these working ones and get a little bit more information. Do a little bit of... Yes. Yeah, that's going to be time consuming to pop that off. I would like to remove the chip, take it out of circuit. But it's probably going to get broken. So I might get some get some data from a working one. Because these are still for sale. And see what information I can find about a working one. Compare it to this. So my new chips have arrived, got a few spares. We will try and take this one out now, put a new one in there. So I'm just trying to get a bit of heat into this because all this underfill. At least cut it, soften it up a bit. Doesn't necessarily matter if we break this chip. But it's doing its job to keep this chip strong and stably supported, for sure. Looks like we got it to budge. Oh. Okay, hopefully it's okay. Zoom in a bit closer, let's get a look. Man, that stuff's everywhere, okay. Looks alright. So it zoomed in a bit better there. It looks okay. Hopefully it looks okay. You can see all this underfill. Try and clean a bit of it off. It also looks like the chip does sit pretty high. I've got a couple of components down here we'll have to put back that just got blown away by the heat. This underfill did a good job. And luckily all the pads seem okay. So this chip must sit up pretty high. We'll just get rid of all the big pieces. Then I'll have to clean up all this solder. Yeah, um, get a little brush, clean that out. So we'll have to solder these capacitors back. Um, but right now I might I might do that last. Gives me a bit of space to work with cleaning it up.
top here. We'll cut away all that. Where's the tweezers? Right. Okay, we've cut away most of this underfill. That should be okay. We'll have to clean all these solder pads up. So the new chip should have uh, should already be pre-balled, so that should make it easy. We'll get in there with the soldering iron. Okay, maybe a couple of pads are damaged. Got my thinner solder wick, I should have started with this. Less chance of it getting caught. With a bit of luck, with a lot of luck, I hope this works. See what that looks when we clean it a bit. I think one pad's a bit damaged. Okay. Not too bad, let's get in a bit tighter. How's that pad? Is that alright? What's this? Okay. They look common. Just one over here. Where does that go to? All right, I've got a few spare chips, so hopefully this does work. Let's take one out, see how it looks. Now the orientation was this way. And while we're there, let's just have a look underneath it. Okay, yep, all nice and bald, ready to go. Let's give this a shot. It 
long as we get our orientation correct, which was this way, and I might just have a look where the ball grid array is so I know how far it goes up. Okay, practically goes up under there. Uh, left to right. With that in place, I'm just going to slowly work the heat in. And I'll turn. Let's turn the heat up a bit, a bit hotter. What do you think? Placement looks okay. Alright, so the two capacitors that came off is one that goes here. It's not really cooperating. There's Okay, that's better. It's really not cooperating. We might have to top up the solder. Let's top up the solder. Okay, it looks much better. Okay, that'll do. I don't want to find it too much. And the other one. Yep, there she goes. Try and get a better grip on him. There he is. Okay, that looks better. 
wait for that to cool down and take this tape off The placement looks really good, except for these capacitors, but that doesn't matter. Hopefully, that chip will work. I'm going to let this cool down, and then we'll turn it on and see what happens. I'm going to run this back through the same USB-C adapter that it came with. So here goes nothing. We've got the beep. You are not going to believe this. It has just detected. Oh my god. 500 gig. Let's go in. There is everything. Okay guys, so I've had to directly connect this to an M2 slot. I got rid of that SanDisk USB-C adapter. I think that thing's rubbish and it might have done more harm to it again. So I've connected it up. I am getting somewhere, but unfortunately every now and then it pops down, it kind of stops and it's going to zero megabytes and then it bursts up 300 megabytes. So it looks like I'm going to get all this data, but I'm very nervous and um, I've got about seven Microsoft minutes left. So I'll call back in a second. Okay guys, another update. I am nervous as hell. I swear I've just waited five minutes, come back, and it's still got seven minutes to go. But we're getting there. We've almost got all this data back. Good news guys, I got all the data back from this SSD. Uh, I was very nervous that whole time, especially when I first tried this and it lost responsiveness. So once I took it out of this, put it straight in the motherboard, I've been able to get all the data back. So if you've got one of these SanDisk SSDs, you need help with it, leave me a comment, or I'll leave some uh, links in the description. I'll see you guys in the next video.